happy man with all the uh, toys you have? I am happy. It's been a um, it's been a good off season so far. Uh, the addition of the guys from a free agent standpoint and from a draft standpoint, um, I've been blown away by the character of the men as much as the players. You know, guys that are just. Um, obsessed with this game and getting better at it um, and obsessed with being great teammates and connecting with the guys that are here and um, yeah so great additions all around what are your early impressions of the sauce uh, ultra competitive tons of swag tons of confidence um, plays with different urgency um, He's a high cut guy, longer guy, which you typically um, don't get the change of direction and the foot speed, which it looks as though, and, and it's early, it looks as though he has that. So it's, uh, I'm excited about you know what he could be. The um, secondary overall, you guys obviously young there last year. Yep. Now you bring Reed, bring Whitehead, drop sauce. How much better do you think that unit can be, and what, what can that mean overall for the defense? Right, time will tell. But um, in this league, especially in the current landscape of, you know, pass happy every week. Uh, it's huge to have a revamped secondary. And, and these guys, like, it, it's so early to name starters and to say who the, the, the four or the five are going to be. Uh, but it's created great competition. And with competition, these guys will all, they'll all grow and get better. And, and uh, with a good secondary, you can, be a, you can be a pretty good defense in this league. It's, it's super early, but, but one of those guys that's kind of been running around a little bit is, is Penick. Um, it seems like he's, I, I don't know if he impressed you guys or does the tail of the last year, or maybe he right. did something during the offseason. Can you talk a little bit about him? Yeah, he's a guy that um, obviously he came here as a corner, so playing the safety position was brand new to him. So there are some growing pains associated with that, but he's got all the stuff that you can't coach. He's long, he's fast, he's athletic, he's tough. <clears throat> just the position's new, and uh, he's got limited experience at it. So he'll be another guy that throws in the mix, and, and you know, the the cream will rise, you know, just more competition for the group. What, what about the defensive line, the additions you guys have made there? Um, you know, how do you see that, that unit overall right now? It, it, it's exciting to think, like, the character of the men, the, 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 if you watch practice and you watch OTAs, they work at an uncommon rate. You know, and I think that's a testament, obviously, to, to Aaron and, and the way he runs those guys and to Scruggsy, but uh, it's also it's a testament to the makeup of that, that group and um, insanely obsessed from tip to tip, every single guy in that room. So it's exciting to think about what they can become as a group. You know, this defensive line, this style in which we play, this attack front, it's, uh, it's best when you're, you're playing 30, 35 snaps a game. Uh, we didn't have that luxury last year because of the, just because of the depth that we didn't have, you know. So the fact that we have some more depth now, you can get back to really the the essence of this front, letting these guys just absolutely rip it, jump off the ball, um, run all day long, and then when they get tired, boom, we got another guy to go in for them. So um, a lot of depth, um, a lot of competition. It'll be exciting to see who emerges from that group too. Speaking of that, like how, how amped up do you get at the fact? I mean, you can talk about that pass rush and, and how dominant it can be, but then we will also marry it with the secondary that now could potentially lock down receivers long enough to get the quarterback to hitch, just how those two pieces will work together. I mean, that's that's the secret to good defense. You know, when we play complementary football, uh, rush and coverage, when they work together, that's when you, you, you play really competitive, tough, stingy defense. So... We're working towards that. We have a lot of work to do. You know, um, adding pieces is obviously a huge component of it and a huge part of it, but it's also refining the scheme, getting these guys dialed into exactly how to how to play the defense we want to play. Um, you know, just fine tuning all the details, polishing it up. So that's that's where we're at now. You lost you know. a, a good run stopper in Foley. Mm -hmm. How do you replace it? It's probably a little bit by committee right now. Like we got the addition of Solomon Thomas, and we got Shep inside, and we've got you know obviously we got Quinn in. We've got guys in there. You know we 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 don't necessarily have the size that we had, but we got guys that will absolutely strain and work their ass off and and fight and scrap. And um, we got we got the right guys in there, and um, and we'll continue to work with those guys. The the attack front and the way that we're built, it's such about explosion jumping off the ball it's about getting on their side of the line of scrimmage so sometimes being a little bit smaller isn't the the worst thing on on the earth as far as our front is concerned so um where we lack size i think we've got strain and we got toughness
Just imagine after last season, after finishing last in, in the defensive category, right. you do some self scouting, some self sure. after the season. How do, do you tinker with the scheme after that? Do you make changes, or do you kind of say, okay, we need better players? Like, what's kind of your feeling after that season, and what are you doing? the months between then and now. Right. I think you look at everything. I think for us as coaches, coaches, we have to have the humility to, to really look at ourselves and how we can do it better from a scheme standpoint, from a technique standpoint, from a teaching standpoint, from a, a drill standpoint, from everything, you know, and then obviously take a fine tooth comb to the roster as well and, and where we can improve in every single area. And, um, so that's, that's where we're at. You know, that's, we devoted the majority of the, the off season to that. Obviously, Acquiring free agents and, and acquiring guys within the draft, that's a big part of the offseason, but a big part of the offseason is also refining our, our scheme and, and all that we do. So just continue to evolve and grow in that way too. Now, the 30 to 35 snaps is, I think, probably JFM may have had the most last year. I'm just guessing. Yeah, He's probably, probably like close to it. 40 to 35. So the 30 to 35, is that ideally – hard and fast rule yeah it is it is it, regardless of what style of team you're playing because whether they're the run stopping or whether they're jumping out of their shoes and they're pass rushing um, there's a level of fatigue that's associated with how we play you know we don't catch blocks we don't read blocks things are on our terms and uh, and when you play like that and you play with your hair and fire and you play with the energy and the and the strain that we demand of them um, asking them to play any more than 35 snaps I think is detrimental to their health and and to the quality of play that's right that was Joey that was, that was Bosa. Yeah. Bosa, I mean, Bosa, we could all say. Maybe they're one of the best. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what if you learned about Jordan Whitehead since you guys have had him in the building? Amazing human being, teammate, like constantly bringing people along, bringing the young guys along, great communicator. Um, all the stuff that we had, like, obviously, we study the tape and, and we get a good feel for the player, but as far as the man, he is everything that was advertised coming from Tampa. I got some people over there that I really respect from a coaching standpoint and a, and a player standpoint, and he was stamped by everybody as far as the character. And uh, he's absolutely lived up to that. So he's a guy that he increases, obviously, what we do on the grass, but he, he improves the locker room as well. When you have a guy like that who can gain the personal trust, how much better does that make your secondary when, when he is communicating out there and, and kind of being that leader in the secondary? It's, it's absolutely huge. You know, we talk about it all the time. We talked about it this morning about, like, there is no wrong page for all on the same page. And great communicators, demonstrative communicators, especially from a safety position that get us all on the same page, it just elevates everybody, you know. So to have a guy like him, is it's huge for us. I know that there were other issues, youth and injuries with the defense last year, but not having, not being able to do to have that front line with that wave that you want, 30 to 35 snaps. How much did that really hamper not only the play but the scheme that you were able to run? What you wanted to do on defense? Not yeah, it's hard. It, what we do is like we play a lot of vision zone defense. And uh, if you're playing vision zone defense, you want your guys to really be able to melt on the intentions of the quarterback and jump it when he takes his hand off the ball. And if you're doing that and then the ball is being held for too long, guys pop open. They come out of the grass and, and, and bad things happen. You know, So um, in order for us to play the, the style of zone defense that we want to play, we want to be on the quarterback and we want to jump his intentions and we want to play aggressive in that way, you need a D-line that – does not let plays extend, you know, and uh, for us to have the numbers of guys that we have now from the D-line perspective, it's going to help us immensely. Jeff, to piggyback off of that, um, you know, with the improvements in the back end and then the additions up front in the middle there with the linebackers, right. does their, will their roles change at all in terms of the scheme and how you want to play them? And then what are your thoughts on the depth at that in that particular area, quit, uh, CJ and, and Quincy. Yeah, I, I think what we ask of them is always going to change a little bit as we fine tune the scheme and change it and, and adapt it to them and their strengths. Um, so it's going to change a little bit, but more than anything, it's just another year in the system. And although we'll change some things, there's a lot of things that we won't change. So for these guys, I really believe this defense puts a ton of pressure on linebackers, especially from a coverage standpoint. You know, and, and uh, another year in the system is going to be huge for those guys and their growth, um, especially for a guy like Quincy who hasn't played a ton of defensive football in this league. You know, so to to see the strides I think that he's capable of, I'm excited. 
Um, as far as the depth is concerned, uh, you know, I'm excited about the addition of Marcel. He's obviously a guy fam- familiar with our system. He brings athleticism, toughness, experience, all those things. I'm also excited about Jamian, Hamza. These are two guys, as, as we all know, that came here as, as safeties, and they they weren't linebackers, and um, so they're they're rookies. They're new to the NFL, but they're also new to the position. So I think they're you know just because I know the, the the two the two men, and I know their their makeup, and I know how committed they are to it. They should make a, a huge jump as well to to provide the depth that's necessary. Because especially at that position, you will sustain injury for sure. And you have to have guys that are capable of, of playing winning football. What was your draft evaluation of Jermaine, and what have your early impressions been of him? Yeah, he he was an interesting one. You know, um, I'm fortunate to have some good friends at the on the on the Georgia staff that that really gave me some insight. Because you always, I think you think um, you think twice when a guy he leaves a program like Georgia that's just so amazing and it's just top notch coaching and facilities and all the things. And like, why why would you leave? Especially, you know, that gets. Um, that goes to another space, especially when they win a national championship. But, you know, and you really talk to the guys at Georgia and, and you ask them, like, they would all have him over again. They would all have recruited him again. They love their experience with him. Um, so I was comfortable with the makeup of the man. Here's a guy that bet on himself. He went to Florida State because he wanted to play a little bit different brand of football. And, uh, and he put that on full display, and you saw a guy that had a higher sack production because of the style and play which he was allowed to play with there. Um, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. Most guys, they are so behind when they get here, but to me, he's a little ahead of most. Here's a guy that, like, you know, a demonstration of his obsession of the game is he's like the YouTuber that's constantly watching Lawrence Taylor. He's he's constantly watching Von Miller. He's constantly watching all these guys and and adding things to his game and and growing. And even when it wasn't provided to him by a coaching staff or whatever, he he was searching it out on his own. So his knowledge of the game is probably a little bit better than most rookies. His his pass rush arsenal is maybe a little bit better than most rookies. And then you put that together with the guy's got length and speed and explosion and and desire <clears throat> and a good makeup and. You got a guy that's got a he's got a chance, you know. So um, excited about him. You guys, yeah, you guys have take a, a couple of, more. You guys have brought in a lot of pieces on defense. So how much does it fall on you to integrate those pieces and get the defense up to speed? It's huge. It, it it it's up to me. It's up to our coaching staff. Obviously, that's that's a huge part of it. And taking advantage of the strengths of these new guys and really integrating them within the defense. Um, and it's a big part of the guys that are here, the, the CJs, the Quinnins, to really bring them along and absorb them into the locker room and, and start to build those connections. You know, I, I, I really believe good defense um, for one is feared. You know, and I think we've got the the guys capable of becoming a feared defense now. But two are, are connected at a deep level, you know, a personal level where there's a, a high level of trust. And um, and that's a huge part of the locker room absorbing these guys as well. So I think it's it's on both of us. Jeff, yeah, you wanted... played it in the era when the salary, when, when rookies would often hold out. Right? What, what, how much of a difference is it now when you get these guys signed and they can start from day one? What, it, what it's huge. Of... Yeah, for for the the previous era when you know it wasn't slotted and guys could negotiate and the whole thing and guys held out, it was detrimental, especially for rookies to miss an off season and then potentially miss a, a training camp, and then a lot of cases missing preseason games was like you wouldn't get a true assessment of these players until year two, and as we all know, typically after the rookie season you can't even make an assessment. So sometimes it was year three. Um, so it's been a, a huge benefit to get these guys in the door. You know, like I, I, I believe the, the current structure and the way that they've, um, you know, the way the, the salary cap is and the way that they have these the, the rookie caps, I think that's awesome. Like pay the players, reward the players that have played in this league, you know, and obviously the rookies are still making good money, you know, but devote the money to the, to the vets, you know, and it allows these rookies to have absolutely – like zero excuses to be here and to be involved. Speaking of your era, Cross is a run, he's OTAs a little bit better. <laughs> back when you played. There's no doubt. I mean, as a coach, is it, is it tough? Would you, would you, I understand the injury concern that we, but would you like more intensity in this time of year, or do you think this is good? I think it's good. You know, I, like you, it's, it's constantly like that 
you know, I got this guy on my shoulder saying like, this isn't football, this, you know, and, and, uh, but it's the best way to do things, you know, like, um, to think about, like, I always put myself in their shoes with the current rules and the way that it's structured. Like for one, I wouldn't have the headaches every night that I have because of my brain, you know, and, and, and I think I would have played longer too. And, you know, so at the, at the end of the day, like, You've created a league now, I think, that provides what the fans want as far as the excitement, the physicality, the, all the things that football provides, but a safer environment for the players. Not only when they're playing, but probably more, more importantly for their post-career lives. I wanted, I wanted to ask you about DJ Reed from two, certain, two specific standpoints. One, it seems like he's a guy who embraces like really high challenges, like mindset-wise. Yeah. He doesn't shy away from big expectations if he's brought that to your room, and then He's always talking about his diet on Twitter, so I'm wondering if he's fanatical about the shape he keeps himself in and stuff like that. I, I'd imagine just getting to know him, there's not a stone he leaves unturned. Like he, you know, a lot of people throw that that term around. He's a dog. He's a dog. He is a dog. He epitomizes it in every way. Um, obviously, not the the stature of a guy. You think, okay, that's that's what it looks like. It doesn't matter. He overcomes all of that because of his all of his intangibles. Um, I had no idea about the diet, but it doesn't surprise me. It's just, it's a guy that he's overcome a lot to be where he's at today. Um, and he will only get better. I don't think this league has seen what he can become. So super excited about him. He, he's a guy that drives that room. A lot of, a lot of time corners are just by nature because they're out on these islands, they can get, um, sometimes they're not most inclusive teammates, you know, if that makes sense. And they can be a little bit of a loner because of the kind of the life they live on the island. But um, he's not that way at all. He's a guy that's constantly challenging the group, constantly bringing guys along, brings energy, brings passion. And um, he will make everyone better, not just the corners. He's going to make our entire defense, our entire team better in that way. Thank you, everyone.